Hi, welcome back to my channel. Today is a continuation in part of yesterday's video. So if you haven't seen yesterday's video, be sure to check that out. I can link it below. Today I am going to be talking about other subjects that we do. So our morning rotation subjects, extracurriculars, those types of things. Yesterday I talked about the basic core subjects that I require of my children. There are just a few that I require each day. If you're new here, my name is Julie. I have eight children and we follow a more delight-directed learning approach. So that really defines how I look at homeschooling in general. Before I begin, I have to say a couple things. First of all, I completely messed up the giveaway yesterday. It's just mom brain, I'm sure. I was actually filling out the rafflecopter details late at night and it had gotten so late, in fact, that it passed midnight. And so when I clicked the next day for the rafflecopter to begin, it actually clicked a day past the video came out. Does that make sense? So yesterday when the video came out, you guys couldn't actually go and sign up for the giveaway for the free year of teaching textbooks, a 3.0 enrollment. So I am so sorry about that to all the many people who watched and were not able to enter. I am extending that giveaway to compensate for that missed time. And also I will put that link right at the top of the description box below so that you can find it. It's the teaching textbooks giveaway. So you can go and enter that. I also have two more giveaways, two giveaways today. That's so fun. I really like like doing these giveaways. I just think it's really fun. So I have two more today that I'll talk to you about in a little bit. Um, was there anything else that I needed to say to you? I guess not. Let's get started. Okay, so one of the things that I had comments on yesterday from that video is why science wasn't on the list of those few core subjects that I required of my children. Um, the subjects, if you haven't seen the video, were math, language arts, our history program that we do together, and Bible that we do as a family together. And so the reason that science was not included yesterday is because this is a subject that at this stage in our life I find very easy to do in a completely delight-directed learning um, approach. So my kids are all very naturally curious. Sorry for the noise. That's the baby making a racket. Hang on. Can you say hello, Lydia? Hello. So my kids are very naturally curious and so far we have explored so many different types of science topics simply by following their interests. And because of that, I have not felt the need to get a science curriculum. Several okay. years ago I did. I actually bought a, a curriculum that talked about astronomy and you know the planets and the sun and the stars and we did it and it was interesting but I can tell you that my kids just did not retain it in the same way that they do retain topics that we explore after they've already developed an interest and this is one of the reasons that I am so pro delight directed learning okay big sister to the rescue so the benefit of delight directed learning that I have found in our life is that when we learn about something that we are already interested in, we learn it very easily and we retain the information because we care. I can see that in myself as an adult. When I want to learn something, oh boy. <laughs> I have this homeschooling project that I'm going to be sharing with you and it is all so brand new to me, trying to figure out the logistics of putting things together and I, I just feel like I'm reinventing the wheel and I feel so ignorant about all of the details of it but I pursued it and I learned it because I cared. And it's the same for my children. When they care about something, they're going to just do whatever it takes to learn about that information. And so that's how it's been with us for science. And if you want to know more about that process with science or any of the other subjects that we study here in our home, I will link my playlist below called How We Homeschool. It is full of videos that go in depth into each of those different components of our homeschool as well as my own homeschooling background. Okay, but today what I am going to be going through is our rotating subjects. So when we go throughout our week, there are times that I like to highlight one thing. So maybe on Tuesday morning, I will want to highlight one thing that we kind of get into as a family. We enjoy it, we study it, we look at it from all angles. 
it is a subject that I really want to get in depth with that day, but it's not something that I want to do every day. This includes our extracurriculars and it does include a little bit of science. And so I call those our rotating subjects. I put it on a loop schedule. And so what I do is I have them listed out. One of them is science experiments. I have um, a book that we go through. Actually, we have several of these. Janice Van Cleve's books, we have quite a few. This is just one I grabbed off the shelf. This one is neat because it talks about the life of a particular scientist and then has an experiment relating to their life. And so this is something that I like to do once in a while just to give us a little um, dip our toes into something new that might spark a new interest. And so this would be that one day. Okay, so maybe the next day, what am I going to do? Am I going to pick this book up again? No, I'm going to go to the next subject on our loop list. Does this make sense? Actually, I first learned about this concept years ago in Sarah McKenzie's book, Teaching from Rest. She talks about all of those other subjects that you wish that you had time for and you don't, you can put them on a loop schedule. So you would just list them all out and each day you would do the next and the next and the next. And then when you get to the bottom of the list, you start again at the top. The benefit of doing this that I have found is that life is busy and sometimes Tuesday might come and go and I never had the time. Something came up and we didn't have time to sit down and do this. So does that mean that's out until next week or the ne or every other week, depending on how many subjects you have? No, it's not. It gets pushed back to the next day because you're not organizing your life by the day of the week. You're organizing it by order, by a loop schedule. So my loop that I do for our morning subjects is um, our history. That one is a given. We do that one at least once a week, usually twice a week. And then the other subjects are science experiments, like I said, um, our nature journals. We have a nature day. And so when we have our nature day, we might do some pages in our nature journal, which I had found had to find these used because um, they're just not in print anymore. But there's other nature journals available. In fact, some of you told me about some that you found on Amazon that were really neat. So this is just a journal that we might do a page or two or three in on that particular day. We might be going outside and exploring um, nature together, or we might be reading a chapter from this book. This is one of the references I use. Now this book is not a Christian book, and so there have been some things in it that has sparked discussion because the book presents it differently than, than I believe. Um, but I really do like this book. It's an older book and you will have a chapter on something very specific like um let's see if i can find it flowers and insects okay that would be one chapter so what they would do is they would go whoops now i lost it okay we'll go to another one i lost that one okay short light waves there the subjects are all over the place but it's all relating to different areas of science and so there'll be something to read to your kids about it with a few pictures here. And then what to do after reading this chapter. So it will have a variety of things. It really changes chapter to chapter. It might have um, something to write. It might have a guess this riddle, a little experiment to do, uh, something to talk about for the discussion. So this book has just, again, given us a different perspective. This is what's the primary goal of this morning time that I do with my kids, is picking one thing each day to kind of broaden our mind and give us something else to think about and to try a little bit that day. Um, it, it allows my kids to be introduced to more subjects that might trigger that desire to learn more in depth about those. So instead of taking the time to say, we are studying astronomy for the next six months and this is what we're doing no matter what, we're sticking to this curriculum. Um, the benefit of doing my rotating subjects and dabbling a little here and a little there is it's pre presenting them with a wide variety of topics and if something really catches their interest, then they are free to dive deeply into that particular subject. So I hope this makes sense. Like I said, in my description box, you'll find videos that I was able to take a lot more time to sit and go through all of them. Okay, so we have science experiments and we have a nature day. What is another thing that we do? We do our map tracing and our window on the world book. I've talked about this quite a bit with you all. This is a book, again, that I pull out every once in a while when it comes up on our loop schedule. 
and this book goes through a particular area in the world and talks about the trials and the victories there of Christian missionaries who have gone to that area. It talks about the people groups, what they're like, what life is like in that spot. So while we do this, my kids are able to trace maps. So I just find maps online and I laminate them and then they can lay tracing paper over the top and sit and trace so that they are doing something with their hands while listening to the story. Another loop topic that we do is art. Woo! This is one of my, some of my kids, this is their favorite. If I say we're doing art today, oh, you better believe they're excited. So this year, I'm going to be going through a few of the techniques found in this book with my kids, Drawing with Children. Honestly, this book kind of overwhelms me. Can I just tell you the truth? <laughs> There's a lot in it. But I have the book, and I stubbornly want to use it. And so I am going to go through and pick out we're not going to go through the whole thing as is. Do I ever do that? Very rarely. But there are specific lessons that you can go through that kind of, in a very conversational way, take you through how to do something specific, specifically, how to draw something. And so we're going to go through some of this. Other things that we do for art is um, just for fun. My kids like to do Art for Kids Hub. It's a YouTube channel by a dad and his children, and it has given some of my non-artistic kids a lot of confidence when it comes to drawing because he breaks things down in a very easy way. Um, it's not creating masterpieces. They're a little more like little line drawings. Some of them are more cartoonish. But for my kids who just felt like, I can't draw, there's just something about this guy that he has been able to just pull out that natural ability within them that they didn't know they had and they get done with their drawing and they're excited because they actually drew something. So we will be doing that. We have some wonderful products that we really enjoy um, by Arteza. We have, of course, the watercolor pencils that I've talked to you guys so much about. And I know a lot of you have bought these to draw along with us. These are so much fun because if you've never used watercolor pencils, you can draw and color with them just like a regular pencil. And then you can take a wet paintbrush and wet your drawing afterwards and it will just kind of gently smear those um, marks that you made into a watercolor effect. Or you can even dip the pencil in water and then color with it and create these really rich colors. So this is something that we enjoy using. And we have this really amazing product which we're just starting to learn about and actually on there they have a YouTube channel. Tessa has a YouTube channel and they have tutorials there that I'm excited about sharing with the kids because they I think they'll help us to go the next step with these products. So these are brush pens. So they are like a watercolor in a pen is the best way to describe it. So they have a um, a very flexible like brush tip and the watercolor, the ink is inside. So let's see if I have a piece of paper here I can show you. Do I even have a piece of paper? Oh boy, I did wrong, my kids did. Okay. So you can see that you can actually, whoops, I probably can't do it upside down. Okay, because it flows down. So it's like a watercolor paint. You can see that brush quality um, coming out of a pen. They're really neat, and it also comes so you can wet this if you want more, a more fluid look, um, or you can do it dry and wet it afterwards, kind of similar to those pencils. So we're going to be doing a lot more with that, experimenting um, with watercolor techniques in a way that it's also like a, a pen drawing. So I will everything. If you go down to my description box, I'm just going to boom, 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 put all of the links to the books and the products and the websites and the YouTube channels. I'll just list it all out in the order that I talk about it here with you. And I will also put all the giveaway information down there, the teaching textbooks giveaway and the two giveaways that I'm going to be telling you about shortly. All three of those giveaways will be down there too. It's just all your information. You just go right down there and you'll see it all. Okay. Um, that's art. Okay, the next thing on our list, so we've done science experiments, nature, we've talked about our geography, our map tracing, our art. The next thing is a really cool resource that I learned about last year and I have never used it. It is a character study from kidsofintegrity.com. So if you go out to the kidsofintegrity.com website, um, I believe it's put on by Focus on the Family Canada maybe? 
I'm remembering this correctly. If you go down, uh, go out to look at this website, you will find for free a full scope of character study. So if you have been here for several years, you'll know that we did character first education for quite a long time. That is another free resource that you can use if you have never looked that one up. That is another great one. It is, again, just free and available. Both of these are completely free. So we've done that one for many years. Um, I think I even had, oh, maybe I don't. I was going to say, I think I had some printouts. Oh, I do. I do. I still have one here. So the character first education comes with, and you don't have to print this out, it's all online, but it has a story, like this is about patience. So there's a story of a someone from history who exemplifies patience. There's your like I wills, your things that you're learning about. And there's corresponding videos and songs on the website to that. And then a craft and a coloring sheet. Um, because we've done this for quite a while, I feel like my kids are just kind of over it. You know, it's been a couple years that we've dabbled in character first education. And so when I heard of kidsofintegrity.com, I thought this would be a fun thing to do once in a while. They have, in the same idea, they have all kinds of different character qualities. They have full lesson plans. They have um, too much, <laughs> too much online, honestly, for me to do. There are so many different things that you can do for each of, like, acceptance was the first one on the list that I looked at, and I thought, I can't even begin to do all of this. I have so many kids. Uh, <laughs> so I'm going to go through, and if we do acceptance, I'm going to look through the lesson plan, the the prayer guides, all of that, and just pick out a couple things that I think would be enjoyable for our family to do. And then when that day comes up on my loop schedule, that's what we'll do together. Okay, the next thing is a game day. Now this one might get out of order, let's be honest. Sometimes it's just one of those mornings that you're like, help, help, <laughs> give me a lifeline here. It's just one of those days. And so on those days, I will pull out a game day. There is so much to be learned from educational games. Learning does not have to be drudgery. Learning can be fun. In fact, can I tell you a secret? You do not need to bring the classroom into your home. The classroom can stay in school and learning can look totally different in your home because the classroom has an important function. It is designed to help one teacher manage a lot of children and help them forward in their educational pursuits. So you don't have to do that because first of all, you have more of a one room schoolhouse. You are one mom, but your children, if you have more than one, are all at different stages of their education, different stages of their life. They have different abilities, they learn in different ways, and you have the blessing of being able to cater to that. So you do not need to create a classroom environment in your home. Just get that idea out of your mind. Just say to yourself, I am learning by living. Learning is a lifelong pursuit. It's not done at a table with a workbook only. It is done in so many areas of, of our life. And so one of the ways that you can learn in a fun way is through games. So some of the games that we like here are Bananagrams, great for spelling. And, you know, I don't do it as much with speed because I have younger people who are first learning how to spell. And so we'll kind of help each other. You know, you can adjust games to however you, however works for your children. Um, Yahtzee is a, is a great one. Skipbo, you know, those kind of card games that deal with numbers. Um, we have a game called Math Dice, and we have Math Dice Junior, and Math Dice Junior is for younger kids, so it's just adding and subtracting. Math Dice itself adds in multiplication and division. These are just fun little games that you can play to strengthen those mathematical skills. Um, we also have games like United States Bingo, which is a very easy way your kids won't even know that they are learning all of the states in the United States. You know, when they play a bingo game and they hear Idaho and they see Idaho and they are covering Idaho on their card, it's reinforced and boom, they learn what Idaho looks like without ever having to sit there with a worksheet learning all of this information that they don't care about. So those are the kinds of things that we would do on a game day just to make, th make it fun. Okay, so those are the things that we will intentionally do sitting around the table together as a family, whereas I'm initiating, okay, today we're going to do some map tracing, or today we're going to do some study of nature with our journals. These are the things that I will initiate. Other things that are available for my kids and other resources that I have available, 
course there are many I just picked a few to share with you guys one is the website Duolingo Duolingo is a very well-made website it's completely free to use it's for learning foreign languages and so I have a couple kids who have been using that to learn Latin it's just something that they were interested in and they've jumped on and pursued it we did do this book we made it about halfway through this book um, and it's re it's really fun I can link this down below if you're wanting to dabble in Latin or they have other um, other languages also this would be a fun book and so I probably am going to get this out again and just play it for fun for the kids that are interested in it um, not all of my kids had the same passion to study Latin and so I think I would rather make this available to those people who are rather than put it on one of our loop schedules again um, but Duolingo is a, an excellent resource that I recommend you checking out. Another one is called Dance Mat Typing. This is a typing program that's free. It's put on by the BBC. And if you look up Dance Mat Typing, I don't remember if it's .com or .org, but you'll find it online. Um, it's you'll see like dancing chickens with eggs, and you know it's just as corny as it sounds. But it it did help my kids with their typing skills. And again, it's all free. So that's something that they have available to go through. Um, PE. Let's talk about PE. Physical education. Um, Any time that my kids are outside doing f intentional exercise. So if they are going for a bike ride or if we do some rollerblading or if they take hikes through the woods or play a basketball game together, um, I will take that and I will write it down in our book of things that we did that day and... That is our physical education for the day. So it's time that is intentional exercise is what I will what I will put in that category. Also field trips, of course, we're not taking as many field trips these days because there's so many restrictions that I just don't even wanna go out. <laughs> so we mostly just been staying home. But in past years, whenever we would take field trips, there's so many incredible places around the St. Louis area. I don't know what it's like in your home, but we have a lot of opportunities. So that's another thing that we do for our homeschool. Also, home ec or shop class sometimes i look at our life and i try to imagine you know if if i was in school what would i call this because i think as homeschooling moms we kind of need that validation sometimes you know some of us have an easier time than others of following a little bit more of an unschooling path of allowing our children to lead and trusting that they really can learn on their own without a whole lot of intervention that comes easier for some of us than others and so sometimes I have to look at something my child is doing and I have to label it in my mind and I have seen since we moved here to this property where we live at uh, three years ago I guess it's been that we started this project and wow have my kids learned a lot of skills and you know what that would be a shop class this would be an actual class like if they were in high school this, they would be learning how to hammer and build things, and they're learning in real life, real life skills. My kids have helped build this tiny house that we live in every step of the way. They, my older ones, were there helping. Um, they've helped expand our barn. They've helped put on metal roofing. They've helped build fences, install windows, and everything else that you could think of. They have helped to build our greenhouse. They've helped with... Um, taking care of things like our garden tractor or tiller when the engine has an issue you know they're there alongside with Jason helping him to fix that they're here for animal care for that's animal husbandry you know all of these things are valuable valuable things that you are teaching your kids this is part of education so you write that down in your document and you feel proud that you are giving your kids an education that is not just defined by the the little book that you have them do or the workbook or learning how to spell a word you're giving them an education that is this big when you teach your children how to prepare a meal or bake a cake you are giving them an education that they can use their whole life so you just keep remembering yourself reminding yourself that everything you teach your children is education all of it all of it here in Missouri, we have to log 1,000 hours in a year to show that we taught our kids at least 1,000 hours worth of education. <laughs> and sometimes newer parents to homeschooling feel worried that they won't be able to come up with those hours. And But I remind them, like it doesn't say 1,000 hours of sitting in front of a workbook. It says 1,000 hours of education, and education comes in many, many, many forms. So just expand your mind and know that you're teaching your kids probably most of the day. 
Okay, a few more references before I let this get too long. Libra Books is an app that you can download. It's like library, L-I-B-R-I, and then books. It is a free um, volunteer-read audiobook service. They only read books that are in the public domain, so typically they're older books. We've used this a lot to listen to audiobooks as a family. I've also, I also use the app Thrift Books, and I'm sure there are more, and if you guys could tell me more um, online used book places that you like. I really like Thrift Books because it's an app that I download to my phone. If you get over, I think, $15 worth of books, your shipping is free, so that's a big perk. And there's just lots of used books available for a cheap price. I've got a lot of our books there. Also, my kids like to listen to the NPR podcast, Wow in the World. Again, this is not a Christian podcast, so they are going to sometimes have views that are very different than mine, but I don't mind that at all because I use those as opportunities to talk to my kids and say, you know, like there's different theories about the way things began or the way things are now, and this is how some people view things, and this is how other people view things. So I like having those discussions with my kids. But the Wow in the World podcast is very fun. Um, it's, it's silly. It's got a little bit of potty humor, you know, like funny bathroom noises occasionally you know that kind of stuff so if that is not okay with you don't don't do this one but just for silly fun where your kids will really learn a lot um, we enjoy those podcasts once in a while um okay a couple more reference books this is a really neat book that jason bought it is a 13 foot timeline a biblical timeline so and it was pretty reasonably priced. He bought it second hand, I think, from Amazon. Oh, okay. <laughs> I better not do this or I'm going to lose it. As you can see, you can pull this out on your floor. And it has a timeline so that you can see, if you're talking about something in the Bible, you can look and see what happened all at that time. And so it's, and then on the back of it are, is more information. And it's just a neat reference that I wanted to uh, tell you guys about. Another one in that same timeline scheme is this Osborne Timelines of World History. This is another book that we pulled out quite a bit last year. Um, so if you turn to a page, this is the Middle Ages, 1400 to 1499, and it shows you all the major things that were going on in the world at that time. So it has it broken up by Southern and Western Europe, Northern and Eastern Europe, Africa and the Middle East, Asia and the Americas, and it goes through and gives you just a general picture of that point in history, which I really enjoyed this because sometimes I have trouble connecting the dots in my mind of, well, if this was happening here in America, what was happening over in Asia at that same time in history? So this kind of puts it all together for you. Um, and while I'm talking to you about this, let me tell you about the giveaways for today which I promise I will double check and make sure you can actually enter in this giveaway. Okay, our first giveaway is $50 toward Usborne Books of Your Choice. This giveaway was generously provided by Jade. She's a homeschooling mom from Arkansas and she has a website, her own independent business called Read and Shine with Jade and I will put her link to her website in the description box and she has offered to bless one of you with a free $50 purchase of books from her website of all the Usborne books. Like, oh boy, it's going to be hard to narrow it down to $50 worth because there are so many incredible books out there. Um, so that is that entry is going to be in another raffle copter. So if you go down, you'll see the teaching textbooks raffle copter entry, and then you'll see the Usborne raffle copter okay so both of those is that same kind of thing you click on the link and it'll give you directions of how to enter each of these will be a full week that you'll have um, to enter um, also Jade is available to do I'm she didn't tell me to say this but I'm sure she is because I had a friend who sold us born books and they can do parties with you they can even do online parties so if you want to invite friends and there's different perks I did this myself with some friends it was fun and so I ended up getting some free books. That's how I got this book, actually, it was by hosting a party. It didn't really take any work for me, but I got quite a few free books, so that was all fun. Or you can just shop her website. So all of that's down below. I like supporting mom to mom, other homeschooling moms, so there you go. And my second giveaway today is, have you ever heard of fun schooling? I will put the link below for fun schooling. 
actually she doesn't even know I'm doing this giveaway. <laughs> she had sent me a couple books a while ago and I set one aside because... Okay, buddy. Oh, thank you. Okay, there you go. There you go. Um, I had set one aside because I wanted to give it to one of you. This is one of her fun schooling books. So, they are... They are Delight Directed Learning Handbooks. So I'm not going to go into great detail about how this works. I will just put a link to her information there because she explains it well. But they're basically just kind of like a guidebook that can take you through a Delight Directed Education. It's just one way to do this. And so you would kind of pick books or things that you wanted to learn about and then this would kind of just be like a blank, you know, guided book that would kind of take you through that. And so this one, with this pretty horse on the cover, I'm going to mail to one of you. Um, if you would just leave a comment below, that's how we'll do this particular giveaway. So just leave me a comment below. Let me know that you would like to win this book or just any kind of comment. If you could just tell me about some extracurricular that you enjoy with your kids or a resource that has really blessed you that you want to share with all of us. I have a list of all kinds of things that you guys have recommended to me. Even um, just last time somebody told me about these because I was talking about mechanical pencils. This was two days ago. They're these like triangular shaped mechanical pencils for littler kids that make it easier to grasp and, and hold on to. So I already ordered them. I was so excited. I can link those too if you want to check them out. But it's just fun seeing um, the kind of things that you recommend and trading them back and forth. Oh, here's another reference. This is really fun. I just want to say thank you. One of our subscribers, Susan, sent us this book and we've enjoyed it. It goes through different wildflowers and and um, it's specific to our area, so that's really fun. Okay, that's all I have for you today, I think, unless I forgot something, I don't think so. Um, yeah, tomorrow I have another video for you that I'm going to be announcing some big stuff, so be, be uh, stay tuned for that. My words are escaping me here. Oh, this has been really fun. I've enjoyed doing all these videos with you. Be sure to enter all three of those giveaways and check out all of the different links and websites that I have below. And then check back tomorrow to see what I have for you coming up. Take care. Have a great day. Bye-bye.